All right, all right, all right. Good morning, Parine. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we are extremely happy to have all of you here in this place. Uh, this is our place of rendezvous. And uh, we can all exclaim that God has indeed been so good to us. Uh, and for that, we want to give him praise. Uh, I just want to thank God for every single one of you. Uh, I recognize that for some, uh, this was not an easy week. Uh, it was difficult. Uh, there were issues, but you are here. Uh, and uh, for that, we want to give God praise. God has indeed been so good to you. I was sharing last night that uh, uh, we had a few issues in my week. Uh, just yesterday, uh, the day before, uh, Sister Benoit had to uh, run to the uh, ER with her mom um, for an incident that happened. Uh, but we look at all of it and we recognize that in spite of it all, God is good. Amen? Amen. And we can give him the praise that he, in fact, deserves. For those of you who are worshiping with us online, we're extremely grateful that you're choosing Parine as your place of worship. Uh, and we believe, well, matter of fact, I am confident that God has a special word for you today. Uh, you're not here by accident, uh, and we know, we know that you're going to be blessed. We need you to communicate with us. Uh, if there's something you believe that we can do to help uh, enhance your worship experience, please let us know, and we'll be more than happy to give due consideration to that request. We want to make sure that uh, your worship service is uh, memorable as well. However, uh, the invitation is being extended for you to come uh, to this place. Uh, it's nice. Uh, the people are amazing, and I'm sure you're going to have an amazing time. Uh, now, uh, there are quite a few folks who are not here today. Uh, today's uh, uh, a very busy weekend. Uh, uh, right now, there is uh, the school rally. It's school rally day. Uh, and uh, many of our folks have gone to the north side, Seven Adventist Church, particularly uh, our, our children from our school. Um, and uh, we're just so very grateful for the uh, Perrine Seventh-day Adventist School. They are doing an amazing job. Uh, they have some responsibilities this morning, this afternoon also for the program. So well, I'm asking all of you to begin to pray, if you're not already right now, for this great gathering at the Northside Seventh-day Adventist Church. You know, the enemy is a liar. Amen, somebody. And when he sees gathering of that sort, where the people of God are coming together, he looks for an opportunity to create or uh, cause pain. And so we ask that the angels of the Lord will watch over his children and protect them. Uh, and I know most of you who are here, at least you should, this afternoon we will be joining them uh, as well. Speaking of that, uh, this is uh, what's going on with uh, uh, the school rally, but we are, have a rally of our own. Amen, somebody. Uh, we're in the middle of uh, my profession of faith rally, and I'm just so very grateful to God for the way he has been leading, the way he's been pointing to us and helping us better understand what it is that we believe in uh, and, and how, how instrumental that is, as it was reminded to us last night by our keynote speaker, the importance of knowing what you believe if, in fact, you're going to be a disciple. Amen, somebody. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit more before we end this series. So again, uh, very extremely happy to have Pastor Brissett with us. We'll have an opportunity to introduce him a little bit later on today. Our series closes next week. Uh, it's going to be the last weekend, so we'd love for you to be there. Invite your friend. It's going to be an amazing weekend. Our baptismal class uh, begins this afternoon uh, at 2.45. At 2.45, what we're going to do is we're going to run upstairs after the service. We're going to have our lunch, and we're going to right back downstairs. I promise you I will not keep you guys too long. I recognize many of you have plans, so do I, uh, to join our folks at the Northside Seventh Adventist Church. So we're going to spend some time with them there as well. Uh, and so uh, we're going to meet together here at 2.45. We'll meet right here in the sanctuary. Uh, we'll have a tete-a-tete. -tete. I'll explain a few things to you. We'll have a short, short study, uh, but we're going to set some ground rules so that we can make sure that we know how we're going to proceed. Uh, I have the names. You were contacted. We're looking forward to seeing you this afternoon. And of course, immediately after that, we are heading, and this is an invitation for everyone, we're heading to the town hall meeting at the Northside Seven Adventist Church where our, uh, our leaders are calling on us to come out because they want to have a conversation with us. 
We recognize that uh, the headquarters is all the way in the Orlando area, and so they are coming to where we are saying, listen, we want to answer your questions. We want to give you more information about what we're doing, what's going on. And so let's take advantage of this opportunity again this afternoon at uh, 6.30 p.m., 6 p.m., strike that, 6 p.m. is the town hall meeting. But even before that, I know we want to be there to support the school uh, with their afternoon program. The address, most of you should know, but it's right there. Uh, uh, 1779 Northwest 119th Street in Miami, Florida. Again, looking forward to seeing all of you. Now, uh, tomorrow evening, tomorrow evening, our sister church uh, is inviting us to come and join them for this uh, uh, virtual family week of prayer. I'm talking about uh, the uh, Coconut Grove Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, they are having at the crossroad a virtual family uh, uh, a life week of prayer. And it's going to be every single night at 7.30 p.m. Uh, and so uh, when you're coming back from work, it's a perfect transition. Uh, uh, you'll sit down, enjoy this meeting, and I'm sure they'll let us out in reasonable time uh, every single night from the 21st all the way to the 26th. You are all invited to attend. It should be an amazing, an amazing time. A couple of dates that I need you to mark your calendar for. Very important. Uh, there are uh, two dates in particular. Uh, there are more because the whole month of May is going to be an exciting month. Matter of fact, uh, I don't have a slide for all four dates, uh, just the first two dates. Uh, May 4th, mark your calendar. What's happening May 4th? It's going to be a health emphasis Sabbath, a health emphasis Sabbath. Uh, and uh, we are excited about that. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Brenda Owusu is going to be with us. Uh, it's planning to be an amazing weekend, so we want you to make plans to be there. Again, May 4th, the first Sabbath of May, is going to be our Health Emphasis Sabbath. The Sabbath after that, we want you to mark your calendar. It's going to be grand. It's going to be grand. We're going to celebrate uh, 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 the most important person in our lives. Uh, and the good, good news is there's no one who will be left out. Amen, somebody. Because if you are alive, that means you have one. Can I get an amen, somebody? We're talking about moms. We're going to celebrate our moms in a very, very special way. Uh, the men's ministry is already putting the pieces together. It's going to be nice. We're inviting you to all come out. Mothers in particular, we want to honor you on the 11th of May. Uh, matter of fact, that whole weekend, uh, but Sabbath is planning to be very special. Uh, Pastor Pierre Francois, Executive Secretary, will be with us that Sabbath. And so we're looking forward to having a wonderful time with our moms. Now, the Sabbath after that is going to be the 18th of May. And uh, for me, it's an amazing Sabbath, simply because what's the 18th of May? Uh, if you're not, actually, I don't want to give you the end. What's the 18th of May? Why is this so important to me? That's what I'm talking about. Yes, yes. Haitian Flag Day. Amen, somebody. Oh, everybody should be saying amen. I don't care if you're Jamaican. I don't care what you are. Just say Amen. Amen, amen. Haitian Flag Day uh, on the 18th. But even more so, we're also going to have our commencement service on the 18th of May. Our school will have their commencement service, so our parents will be there, the children will be there. I'm sure there's going to be quite a few guests who will be there also. So we want to make sure that we're ready to uh, uh, welcome all of them. So for the 18th, our commencement service, uh, we're inviting every single one of you to come and to attend. So uh, once again, uh, 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 thank you so much for marking your calendar. Thank you so much for taking those in. Now, folks, let me say something like, since something very important to you. Um, and, and part of what I want to do is make sure that you are on the known. Amen, somebody? In other words, you are under known. You know at all time what's going on here at Peron. And part of what I want to do, part of what I've been trying to do is to make sure that every single Sabbath is an opportunity for you to help somebody draw closer to God. Amen. All right, because we have been called to be disciples. Amen, somebody. And so when you come here, what I can guarantee you uh, is that from this pulpit, you're going to hear a word that's going to help you to make a decision for him. Amen? The whole service is supposed to help you. And so uh, part of what Pastor Brissett mentioned last night, which I kind of highlighted at the end of the service, is a big part of what we do is social. Do you understand that? It's social. In other words, people make decisions not just because of what they heard, as important as that is, but people make decisions because they ask themselves, do I want to be in this place? Do I want to be around these people? Are you still with me? 
And the way for them to make that decision is not when there's an evangelistic meeting, it's right now. Amen. As you help them develop these friendships, these relationships, that's why every single Sabbath is an opportunity for you, all right, to help that person take one step closer to making that decision. Can I get an amen, somebody? And so uh, please uh, uh, make sure that you're always checking the calendar. Uh, if I have not done so yet, and, and, and that's totally on me, I'm going to make sure that I have uh, our preaching calendar, which I'm very happy to post. It's going to be on the bulletin board. You'll know exactly who's going to be there, what's happening every single Sabbath, so that you can plan accordingly. Again, your pastor tells you, uh, I don't like it when you go out. Amen, somebody? I don't. I just don't. If you have to, I, I respect it. I, but I need you here. Can I get an amen, somebody? Oh, I could not say it more. I, I mean, it's as blunt as I could possibly say it. I need you here because there's work that needs to be done. And the work will not be done by Pastor B. It will be done by you. All right? That work needs to be done by you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We want to recognize a couple of folks who are visiting with us today. You'll get acquainted with them a little bit uh, 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 better in a few minutes because they have something really special for us. But I want to acknowledge and recognize them even now. We have uh, 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 Frankie is here, Snyder is here, Wildy is here, and uh, Broadly is here. Why don't you guys stand on the corner right there and let us see you. Thank you so much for being here. We're extremely happy. They are coming. Uh, some of them are coming all the way from New York. Some of them are here in Florida. Uh, but they are deciding to visit with us. But not just visit. Uh, they are planning to minister to us in a very special way. So uh, even now, I want you to pray for them. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for uh, making time to be here. My good friend Frankie, we've known each other for a little while. I'm so happy that he is here today. I'm going to invite our clerk to please come forward. Uh, we have some business we need to take care of just before we open up our service. Happy Sabbath, brethren. Okay, so we're here because we have some transfers that we need to do. And we have two, this is going to be the first reading. We have two transfers going out, leaving Perrine, and two coming in to replace those two that are going out. Amen? Okay, so this is the first reading, and the transfers are going out. Transfer for the membership of Sister Cicely Beckford as well as Sister Phyllis Rose. They're requesting that Perrine send their membership to the Lake View SDA Church in Powder Spring, Georgia. This is the first reading. And brethren, you should be excited. The ones coming into us are Sister Brenda Phillips. Where's Sister Brenda? She's, she's probably up in the kitchen. She's always in the kitchen. <laughs> She's coming to us from Kendall SDA Church and Sister Carmen Miller. She is coming to us. Brethren, you remember Sister Miller, right? Come on, Sister Miller, she's actually just came back from visiting with her daughters in Georgia. She is, I want to say more or less, going on the shutting side right now. But Sister Miller is coming to us from South Ozone Park, and that is in New York, South Ozone only. This is the first reading. Yes. All right, so this was the first reading, as our clerk just mentioned. Uh, and, so, uh, we, um, and so if you have any questions about those names, uh, we want to be able to send a good report uh, to the, for the outgoing members. Uh, if you have any objection to us sending a good report, let us know. Uh, so that we can have that discussion. And of course, those who are coming in, even now we welcome you. We're extremely excited to have you. All right, so I'm going to leave it to the clerk for uh, the rest of the announcement just before we open up our service. Thank you again, Pastor. Happy Sabbath again, brethren. I know Pastor has already done the welcome, but please, I beg you to just permit me to say welcome to our dear sister, Colleen Morgan. She has been away at college, and she is visiting with us today. Sister Colleen, thank you for coming. We're, we're happy to have you worshiping with us today. Amen. 
Didn't mean to put you on the spot, but I had to do that. All right, brethren, so here's the announcements for you. This afternoon, there will be no AY, no Bible studies. And for our parents, there will be no FBI. And this is because all roads will lead to? Amen. Thank you very much. The deacon and deaconesses, you're being asked to meet immediately after the divine service here today with your head deacon on this side of the church. Our men's ministries person also wants to meet with all our men immediately after divine service. I'm not quite sure which side of the church, but I'm sure they will work that out. All right, bear that in mind for us, please. So for our personal... Oh, one, one thing, let me just say, Pastor did mention the baptismal class, and somebody asked, what baptismal class? So I just want to clarify, this is our Bible studies class for our new converts. All right, so all new converts, you're meeting with Pastor at that time. For our personal ministries outreach, brethren, do you have an urge to tell someone about Jesus? Okay, do you like to meet people? If your answer is yes, God is calling you. Be an instrument in his hand. Therefore, consider joining the personal ministries community outreach team. Amen? Amen. 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 And that team resumes the outreach program on the second Sabbath in May. So you can always see any member of the personal ministries team or Ella Castell over there. Thank you. For our children's ministries, Bible studies continue on Monday, 6.30. Now to our club ministries. So club meetings will be tomorrow at 10 a.m. Our District 5 camp will be held next weekend, the weekend of April 26 to 28, at Miami Everglades. Now, all forms and funds of $70, they're due tomorrow. So when you come to club meeting tomorrow, please remember to bring your forms as well as the funds. Or, or, or Adventure Grand Slam camp, is also coming up May 31 to June 2, and that will be held on the Southeastern um, Conference Campground in Hawthorne. And just to remind all of us who will be going to Wyoming, the International Campery this year, the second installment of 275 is due at the end of this month, which is in a couple of days, so please bear that in mind. Um, brethren, especially our mothers, I know our fathers, from time to time you may go in there, but brethren, the mother's room is very dear and near to our heart, because we want you to be very comfortable when you go in there. We want our visiting parents, our visiting mothers, when they come here at Parine, when they walk into our mother's room, they feel comfortable. They feel at home. I'm going to kindly ask all our mothers, and I just want to remind you, the mother's room is only for our mothers who have to take care of your children. But mothers, I'm going to ask you kindly, work with us to keep it just like how your mother's room at home stays. Amen? Well, brethren, okay, let me rephrase that. Let me, re let me rephrase that. And I'm assuming that your mother's room at home is all nice and clean and welcoming and inviting. Amen? So, brethren, please work with us to help keep the mother's room clean. We just renovated it because we thought it needed some upliftment and we need when our mothers go in there for them to feel relaxed at home and to come back to worship with us here at Perrine. Amen? Brethren, can you work with us on that? Brethren? 
Amen. Thank you very much. Just remember, also, I, I want to say happy birthday to all those individuals who celebrated birthday this week. And brethren, we have some birthdays coming up this week. I want you to keep them in prayer. Please don't forget, if you cannot make a call to say happy birthday, certainly you can say a word of prayer. God bless you. Have a great Sabbath. Pleasant Sabbath Church. Join us as we sing hymn number 223, 223. Crown him with many crowns. I'm going to invite you to stand as we sing. chapter verse 16 Romans chapter 1 verse 16 says for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes for the Jew first and for the Greek amen we are transitioning now to our moment of intercessory prayer now there is this is a very special time. Um, the work of interceding is very special work for I believe all of us here are intercessors even have experienced the blessing of interceding for others. So as we are about to reach the throne of God and intercede for the church but also pray as well. Uh, the prayers of many but in faith can do wonders in Christ's name. So as our praise team lead us into the song of prayer, so I will invite you to kneel with me, those who can, or assume a position of submission and humility as we approach the throne of God. Yeah. 
Majestic is your name on all of the earth. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Holy, holy, holy God Almighty. The one who is and is to come. Father, as we come before you at this time, we come before you in praise and thanksgiving. When we think about the Lord, how he's led us, how he's taken care of us, how he has been faithful to us. Our soul rejoices and our soul want to sing hallelujah. For indeed, Father, we recognize we are standing upon your grace and the blessings of your providence to us. Father, we praise you this morning for who you are. You are our creator God. You are, you are our redeemer. You are our king. You are our Lord. What aren't you to us? Father, we thank you for the way that you have provided for us, the way that you have stood, stood by us, the way that you have led us, the way that you have protected us, the way that you've presented yourself to us as a refuge and strength and surely in an ever-present help in trouble. Oh, Father, we praise you and we thank you. Again this week, you have stretched your mighty hands, carried us like an eagle, carrying us upon your wings, protecting us from both visible and invisible dangers. Again, it remains too that the angels of the Lord encamps around those who fear him have indeed protected them from gender. Father, we praise you. We thank you. Lord, we also acknowledge this week that we have faltered some ways. We haven't been consistent with what we say what we believe. We haven't been consistent with walking in ordering our steps in your word. We have strayed in many respect. Father, we have strained at times in our thoughts. We have exposed our minds through terrible things. Things that we have watched, Lord, that were not really by the guidelines of your word. Things we've listened to. Things we entertain ourselves to distractions of many kinds, Lord, though harmful may be. Have stolen time away from your away from the study of your words and away, away from things that are honorable to you. Father, as we seek in our hearts at this time, and the church is invited to seek in its heart at this time, we recognize, Lord, that we need your forgiveness. We recognize that we need your grace. We recognize that, Father, that we need a second chance. So, Lord, I cry up to you at this time to please forgive your church. To please, Father, wash us of all our sin. Wash away our sins, I pray. Clean us of all impurities of unrighteousness of any kinds. Though harmful they may have appear. We pray that, Father, that our, our sins that are registered in, a, in the books of heaven may be blotted away in Jesus' name. You told to Moses that it is he who sinned against you that you will remove from the book of life. But we believe also that it is those that are forgiven that are re-entered and re-admitted in Christ Jesus' name in the book of life. Oh, I pray at this time, Lord, that you will cover us under the shadow of the Almighty. I pray that the blood of Jesus, we accept 
and we believe in Christ's name that we have been forgiven and washed and cleansed by faith through the blood in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, Father, as we rejoice this time for the joy of forgiveness that we have just received and receive it in Jesus' name. We ask you at this time, Father, that you will provide us, you will pour out upon us uh, the spirit of the living God. The spirit that will give us victory over the besetting sins. The spirit that will give us victory on, 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 on a bad traits of character. The, the spirit that will bring life within us. Allowing us to walk in faithfulness and in the righteousness of Christ. Please Lord I pray that you will baptize us from on high I pray. Oh pour out your spirit O oh Lord in our lives. Pour out the spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us today. Fall afresh on me today. Take hold of my heart. Take hold of our hearts. Take hold of our entire being, O oh Lord. And bring us to walk in holiness and righteousness. Today we want to bring before you your family, the church as a whole. We also bring before you those who are not able to be here but are attending online wherever they are. We pray that the blessings of the Lord will fall upon them, upon us according to our needs. Many of us, many of us, Father, are suffering physically with physical ailment. I pray a blessing and I pray an ointment from the throne of God to soothe and heal those who are suffering physically but also souls who are suffering ailments that are more of a mental and psychological nature. I pray a blessing. I pray an anointing of blessing to flow from the throne of grace of the living God to make its way through the doors of the church, to make its way to the hearts of those deeply in need of that palming this morning, I pray. I pray for those who are going through financial issues. Lord, times are difficult, but we know the Lord can provide. So I pray, Father, again in your grace that you will op open the windows of heaven as you bring us to faithfulness in our faithfulness in our tithing and offering to you and i pray that as well lord that the blessings of the lord will make their way into our hearts i pray i pray for the families the mom and dad the children the youth i pray for the leadership of your church locally and worldwide I pray also for the leadership, the, 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 for, for the secular leadership out there. For not only do you work in your church, but you work all over the world. Because salvation is for everyone. So I pray, Father, for the secular leadership out there. Because you are, the Spirit of God is operating a work in these settings as well. Pray you for... The speaker of the hour who will be bringing the word today i pray lord that you will give him the portion that you see fit of the spirit of the living god because we understand that we have not moved driven all the way from where we've driven to here to hear a man but we came here to hear a man of god moved by god inspired by god anointed by god so therefore lord use him as such i pray so that, Father, we can receive the words of the living God, the words of life. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. Thank you for your grace. What I fail to ask, Father, please, fail not to grant according to your loving kindness, God, I pray. In Christ Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. 
Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus died for all the children. Jesus died for all the children. All the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus died for all the children of the world. Jesus died for all the children. All the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus died for all the children of the world. Jesus loves the little children. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of Jesus loves the little children. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Just very quickly, um, our children's story will be a little bit different today. I'm not going to get into too much detail. Um, you will see exactly what we're talking about. Um, however, just before, I, I want you to keep an attitude of prayer. Uh, we had a little bit of an incident outside. Uh, somebody fell. The ambulance is on its way. I don't want you to be alarmed. It's being taken care of. But I just want you to pray in your heart and in your mind. Uh, the person looks like they are fine, but you just lift the person in prayer uh, that God will do what we know God is so capable of doing. Uh, enjoy this special presentation. We all have heard this saying, he's carried a lot of baggage from his past, or stay away from her baggage. Think about it. Baggage, we get it from other people. The things that they say to us or do to us, if we carry those memories around, in a sense, we carry on baggage. I remember picking up my first baggage. I was just a little boy. He was just like yesterday. Hey, hi Bradley, how are you? Who's this man? Who is this man? Uh, I thought we were friends. Uh, 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 where are you going? I'm going to go play ball with my friends. Oh, uh, can I go too? I want to go. No, Frankie, I said my friends. I thought we were friends. Uh, wh why can't I go? You don't really want to know, Frankie. I want to know. I want to go play ball too. Frankie, it's because you're fat. No, 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 no. I'm not fat. My mama says that I'm big bones. Dinosaur got big bones, but you're fat. Dinosaur has big bones. You know what? My mama says that I'm chunky. Last time I checked, peanut butter was chunky. Frankie, you're fat. You know what? My mama says that I lost weight. Frankie, it looks like you gained weight. Okay, you know, my mama says that I'm just different. Different? Then go back where he came from. <laughs> Stick and stone may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's one of the biggest lies we ever taught our children. Words hurt, they cut deep. But we have to teach our children not to value the words of other people. We should see ourselves based on God on our relationship with him. If not, <laughs> we begin collecting more baggage. You see, it doesn't seem that easy. Life goes on, the more we pick up baggage. Sometimes we pick up baggage from those who are close to us, like our best friends. Uh, hey Jennifer, how you doing? You know, you know last night we had fun. You know, we had a, a great date night, and I wonder if I could see you again. It's like, you remind me of my science class. We had so much chemistry. 
Oh, just give me a quick second. I think I think I see Frankie coming. Hey, it's not there. Oh, hey Frankie, how you doing, Frankie? No, 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 no. Who are you talking to? Oh, that, oh, that was my mom. Sorry, sorry. Your mom's name is Jennifer now? Uh, no, 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 no. Tell me the truth. You don't uh, do me like this. Who, who are you talking to? All right, Frankie. Since we're in church, I won't lie to you. I was on the phone with Jennifer. Or Jennifer. No, how are Jennifer? No, 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 no. You don't do me like this. We're supposed to be best friends. We are best friends. you supposed to talk to her for me, and now you play me like this? We are best friends. No, 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 no. We don't do that anymore. We, we, we. No, you know what? They say best friend forever. Forever just getting shot now. We're not friends. <laughs> you did that. You're supposed to be my best friend. Friends go through life the same way we're trying to go through life. Sometimes they make mistakes. But we have to learn to forgive them. Either you forgive them or carry on baggage throughout your life. Now you become 16, 17, 19, 20, tallies, and you walk in a wound, carry on baggage of your life. <laughs> What's so deep is sometimes we pick up baggage from those who are close to us, like our parents. Frankie! Yes, Frankie, what is this? Yes, mommy. What is this? Uh, you, you found in the mail? No, it says report card. Oh, my report card? Yes, yes. What, what is this? What does this say? Uh, um, I got a B plus. A B? <laughs> yes, w mommy. How did you get a B? I had an assignment that I didn't to. Oh, you had an assignment that you didn't do. I worked two jobs. I get up at the crack of dawn. Look at your clothes. Look at your shoes. Mommy, next time I give you ne a... There is no next time. I don't ever want to see this again. Look at it. <laughs> Look at it now. Next time, Mommy. Get it together. You know what B stands for? Give me your belt. No. Give me your belt. Now, give me your belt. Take it off. <laughs> give me your belt. The next time I see this letter... You're going to know what B stands for. What does B stand for? <laughs> what does it stand for? Belt. <laughs> oh, my goodness, this generation. Oh, I can't do it. Mommy, the bell was not part of the practice, okay? <laughs> you see, kids, not because our parents don't love us. They love us. But it's like everyone has their own baggage. Sometimes they're too heavy for them. They don't know what to do with it. It's happened to dump it onto us. All right? But we can't value ourselves based on the words of other people. She has to be based on Christ and our relationship with him. If not, <laughs> more baggage. Pass. You have to speak to this lady here. The sister, since I came this morning, she's staring at me, looking at me all, all, all the time. Do I owe you? <laughs> huh? Uh, what can judge? You see, sometimes the baggage is too heavy for us. To, we don't know what to deal with, do with them. Anyone looking at us for no reason, we start upset, and then we try to dump the baggage onto them. Mm-hmm. And the process of trying to dump your baggage into somebody else come back right to you. More baggage. <sighs> Human being, sometimes we don't need help to help us with the baggage. We have the tendency to load our own baggage. For example, when we compare on ourselves with others and say, why is life so difficult for me and easy for somebody else? I'm no good. Mm -hmm. When you bind into that lie, more baggage. <laughs> I came to United States 20 years ago. I'm working hard and I still cannot have a home. And then Sister Janet just come from Jamaica last year, and she has a fat bedroom apartment, and, and, and a three-bed bathroom, a BMW. Why? Why it's me? Mm-hmm. Continue. More baggage. <laughs> and you get to a point, 
now you're 60 years old, 70 years old, and you're walking around with baggage. You cannot focus out of school. You cannot focus at work, and the pastor is preaching, and you sit down at church. You don't even pay attention to the sermon because you have a lot of baggage. You see? Oh, <laughs> this little one, I got that. I got it under control. If I can carry all those baggage, you know, this small one, I can deal with that. I have it under control. You see, this small one, it's look light, right? It's the EV EVS one. This is my secret sin. The little one no one could see. That's what about to choke me and kill me, put me onto the ground. I came from New York. As I was coming here, I carry luggage because I'm staying for a vacation. And people feel sorry for me on the train because I have a lot of baggages. They will get up and have me have a seat just like a pregnant woman. <laughs> if you are elderly or you uh, have uh, accessibility, they will get up and have you sit. But they embarrass the, for me. I feel embarrassing because I'm carrying a lot of baggage. So I'm trying to squeeze them like this, not to take the entire space. Whether it's small or big there's nothing sweet about baggage they all embarrassing and i i was saying to myself only if they knew i really don't need help with those actual physical baggage they will baggage i'm carrying inside no one could see it it's only god could see it and when pastor benoit invite me to pay right and I heard him preaching on Matthew 11, verse 28. Come to me, heavy, all heavy laden, I will give you rest, I will give you peace. And I look at pastor and I say, pastor, are you out of your mind? God says that I cannot even barely can make it work and he will say, come to me. And I heard the voice say, yes, his arm wide open at the cross. And... I say, yes, nail it open with the nail. And the voice say, Frankie, those nail, it's for you to have a chance so you can hang your baggage at the cross. And I come to Jesus. That's when I had a civic talk with my father. And I say, Lord, I can't do this anymore. I've been carrying those baggage for so long. I'm tired with those baggage. And if you are willing, would you please take those baggage away from me? And you know what? He takes them. And I feel free. And I feel happy. That song by Zaka Dikotes, that I love that song, it's just this song speak to me. He say, you don't know my story. You don't know. What I've been through. You don't know what I've been through. I'm here, Let travel all the way from New York so that I can share my story with you. Everywhere I travel, I want to share my story. Next weekend, I'll be in Orlando. I have four churches waiting for me for the weekend to share my testimony. Now, for those who doesn't know me, my name is Frankie LV. I'm from New York, and I'm sharing my story with you. When I came from AED, because of the language barrier, my professor thought I would have a learning disability. I was in a biology class, life science, and she took me out and sent me to the office to see the person who deal with students with accessibility, thought that I had a language barrier. I mean, she didn't recognize that I had a language barrier. And the lady spoke to me, said, you know what? You go back to your professor. You don't have any problem. It's just a language barrier. Until now, the professor never see me again. She doesn't know what happened to me. Until now. It's been years ago. The second semester after, my English professor, after my essay, grading my essay, I make a lot of mistakes. Don't put the S when I say she speaks. 
and she looked at my paper. She said, you know what, Frankie? I don't think you can do it. You need to drop out of college. Have you ever heard about a trade school? You can go for three months. You can get be a plumber, you know, all that. Get three months certificate. You cannot do a four years college degree. And I was not happy about it. And I went back to my advisor. My advisor withdrew me from the class. And that's when I transferred to Oakwood University. By God's grace, brothers and sisters, within five years, I was able to graduate with three bachelor's degree. I was able to graduate with a bachelor degree in math and bachelor degree in math education and bachelor degree in French. Um, two years later, I attend Atlantic uh, University, that's in uh, Massachusetts, uh, no longer there, right? And uh, our first Seventh day Adventist school, where I received a fir first master degree in education. Well, my parents travel from Florida to for my education, and I received my le acceptance letter from Columbia University, and I graduated with a second master degree in math education. Currently, I'm a full-time professor teaching mathematics for City University in New York, where I teach in Manhattan. I share my story with my students. This is the reason why I'm starting to share my story. And at the end of the semester, the student came to me and said, you know what, Professor? I was about to give up. I could not do it anymore. But every time I remember your story, you inspire me. And I'm finished the semester strong. Thank you so much. Amen. When I got the position at um, BMCC, both Manhattan Community College, one of the professors says that, I don't understand. You just got at the job for three years. Now you appointed for a full-time position. Don't you know that we have professors, they've been adjunct for 14 years, 20 years. They still a part-time. What's your faith? You are serving a great God. Just like that, he told me. I do have reason right now for me to travel all over, to share my testimony, to say that God, the battle is not yours. I do, since then, I don't take people's baggage anymore. Whatever they say about me, whatever they do to me, I don't take people, people's baggage. In order for us to be free, to receive the Holy Spirit, for God to do something with us, we have to let go. We can't worry about what people say to us three years ago, five years ago, and do to us. That person has been moved on, and then now we're still alone. The Holy Spirit doesn't work like this. The Holy Spirit only works when it's fresh, when it's clean, when it's neat. It's going to do something miracle in your life. I ask you all to pray for my ministry. That's what I do in New York. I travel a lot and forgot to bless me and share my testimony so that everyone can be blessed. Thank you, everyone. May God bless you. My brother from Oakwood, Woody. morning church and happy sabbath i want to thank brother my brother for that wonderful skit that he has just done it is it has been a blessing to me and um i want to inform you guys too that if you don't pay your tithes and offering you'll be carrying also baggages so <laughs> amen It is now time for the offering. Thank you, my brother. We are honored to be in the house of the Lord. And at this time, we are delighted to return our tithes and a faithful offering. Let us pray. 
our Father and our God. We give you thanks once more for this your holy Sabbath day. We thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. And as we come this morning to return our faithful tithes and our offering, I pray that you may bless it, that it will go and multiply and bring in souls in your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Recently, I sat in an aircraft and listened carefully as the flight attendant gave the safety instruction for the flight. Although I have known before that day the words in the safety demonstration stuck with me as I listened. The flight attendant said the typical line above would do in a case of an emergency in which there is a loss of air pressure in the plane. Which is, put, which is to put your mask on first before stopping to help those around you. Clearly, even in our daily lives, we are best able to give back when we first take time to steward our own health, finances, and relationship among those other things. The Word of God says, each of you should should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful steward of God. If anyone speaks, they should do as one who speaks the very word of God. If anyone serve, they should do so with the strength God provides. With what gift had God given you? Think back on the week Think back on this week and consider what gifts the Lord has blessed you, your families, and many of your work. Now, think now how you would be blessing to those around you. Today's offering will go to support our local church budget, which support our, our ministries that are that are heartbeat of our church all week long. Not just on Sabbath. The Lord Jesus himself said, it is, more, it is more blessing to give than to receive. The deacons will now go for tithes and offering. The Lord. The Lord is blessing me right now.
New York. In 1995, he graduated from Pine Forge Academy and then attended Oakwood College from 1995 to 1997. Pastor Brissett holds a Bachelor's in Religious Studies from Hampton University and a Master in Business Administration from St. Leo University. Currently, he is pursuing a doctorate in ministry at South University. He is also a licensed instructor for the Prepare Enrich Counseling Program. In 1998, Pastor Brissett joined the U.S. Navy, where he served as an operations specialist on board the USS Estosin and Commander of the Second Fleet. He also served as a lead enlisted instructor and lead petty officer for the Department of Professional Development at the United States Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. Pastor Brissett served as a pastoral assistant at the Miracle Temple Seventh-day Adventist Church under the leadership of Pastor Freddie Russell. After faithful service at Miracle Temple, the Southwest Region Conference called him to serve as the pastor of the Emanuel SDA Church and the Ephesus SDA Church in Hammond and Covington, Louisiana. Pastor Brissett has also served as the pastor in the states of Florida and Ohio. Under his leadership, souls have been won to Christ, ministries have been started, debt has been liquidated, and churches have been renovated. He also continues to serve on numerous boards and committees in and outside the denomination. Pastor Brissett currently serves as the senior pastor of the Church of the Oranges Seventh-day Adventist Church in Orange, New Jersey. He is married to the former Tiffany Smith of Richmond, Virginia. They've been married for 26 years and have been blessed with three wonderful children, Julian, Kennedy, and Micah, and two granddaughters, Isaiah and Carter. Pastor Brissett is a lover of music, the gym, reading, and sports. He is convinced that God doesn't call the qualified, but he qualifies the called. His favorite text is Romans 5.8. God commendeth his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's right. Good morning, church. Good morning, Good morning church. Good morning. Wasn't that a lovely children's story? Yes. Amen. We came here to praise the Lord. And we have a lot to praise us God for. We up here are not doing uh, a concert. We are praising God. And we want you all to join with the singing in praising God who has done wonderful things for you this week and throughout your lives. Join the praise team at this time. First, 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 first again. First, first. Heart the herald angels. Jesus, the light Jesus, of the world. The light of the world. Glory to the newborn Glory king. Glory to the newborn king. Jesus, the, Jesus light the light of the world. We will walk in the light. Beautiful light. Come where the dewdrops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around. The light, the light of the world. Oh, we will walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Everlasting Lord. the everlasting Lord, Jesus, the Jesus light the of the light world. Of the world. Oh, we will walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dewdrops of mercy shine bright, shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the 
Victory, he reigns on. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. every eyes closed as together we pray our father and our god for this sacred space and sacred place we thank you for the sparing of our lives that we are able to once again open our mouths and declare that god is great and greatly to be praised in these moments of preaching there is no preaching without the holy spirit there is no clarity except you, God, bring clarity to the hearts and minds. So, God, I pray that as every word is spoken from the pages of sacred scripture, they fall upon a receptive ground in the hearts, men, women, boys, and girls, whether seated in this physical sanctuary or watching online. God will be careful. That out of obedience to receiving your word, out of obedience to what you call us to do, we'll be careful at the end of it all to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. Let everyone together say amen, amen, amen and amen. Well, I greet you in the name of God, our Father, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Holy Spirit, our comforter, and what a joy and a privilege it is to be here with you who make up the membership, the leadership and discipleship of the Perrine Seventh-day Adventist Church. I bring you greetings from the Church of the Oranges, Seventh-day Adventist Church in Orange, New Jersey, where we are excited about Jesus and believing in God for hearts to be transformed and hope to be restored. I'm thankful for my friend, my brother, your pastor, Dr. Edley Benoit, and for his wife and family. Can we celebrate God's gift to you in Pastor Benoit on today? Certainly, God has gifted you with a pastor par excellence, one who is the same in the pulpit as he is out of the pulpit. And so we are thankful for him and for his ministry. And for a little over two decades now, he's, I'm proud to call him friend and brother, humble to do it. And so what a great honor it is for me to stand behind this sacred desk where he labors week in and week out, sharing the unsearchable riches of God's word. On well, last night, we were together and we had a wonderful time discovering what it looks like to be a 21st century witness. And I want to peel back another layer this afternoon, as it were, and share with you for a few moments, let the church say a few moments. <laughs> Try that one more time. A few moments. God bless you. 
Um, also grateful to see familiar faces from um, the Bethel Seventh-day Adventist Church in Brooklyn, New York, where my father and served so many capacities. We lived on Long Island and had to be subject to the trauma of traveling from Long Island to Brooklyn every week. We have since grown after seeking therapy, but um, good to see familiar faces. <laughs> and uh, for that, we give God praise. It was read by uh, the wonderful elder earlier at the scripture of Romans chapter 1, but as I was praying last night, God directed me to a different passage of scripture, and I want to share with you, I know you honor the reading of God's word, you can remain seated. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Forgive me, um, media ministry, for not uh, sharing that. But Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. I'll read in your hearing. We're thankful for our online congregation sharing with us today as well. We praise God for your presence in worship. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10 says these words, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. The reading of God's word is blessed. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I want to share in the preaching moment with this thought in mind, investment property. Investment property. The story is told of a gentleman, older gentleman, who made his weekly visit to the store in his small town. On this particular occasion, he noticed there was a young man around the corner in the alley who looked like he had fell on hard times. This wonderful gentleman decided that he would take this young man into his home, that he would give him a home, he would give him a chance to move ahead in life. This young man had never really had a home with the environment that he was given by this older gentleman. And so on several occasions, he found himself wanting to act contrary to the life he had been given. The old man sacrificed for him. He gave him a roof over his head, food on the table, clothes on his back. He paid for him to go to excellent schools, sent him off to college, and after some years, the young man graduated with his degree. Some years after he had moved on in his profession, they were sitting at the Thanksgiving table. And the old man now, with his eyesight failing and his mobility decreasing, said to the young man, I'm so glad you were able to make it for Thanksgiving this year. It had been a while since you had been home, and I thought that you didn't want to have anything more to do with me. The young man said to the old man, he said, listen, truth is, if it had not been for you showing me some mercy, I would not be where I am today. If you had not pulled me out of that alley and put clothes on my back and gave me a chance to live a new life, I would not be able to enjoy the life I'm enjoying today. And really, brothers and sisters, the essence of that story really hits home when we consider where we were when Jesus found us. When Jesus found us, we were like the boy in the story. We were in a deplorable condition. Our lives were quickly spiraling out of control. We were headed nowhere quick, fast, and in a hurry the weight and the burden of sin had become an albatross around our necks. 
Years of wasting purpose and potential to gratify ourselves drained our spiritual batteries and we could hold no charge. The law, no charge. Sacrifices, no charge. Fasting, no charge. Revivals, no charge. The enemy of our souls, the prince of the power of the, 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 the air, the, the one who is our adversary was at work in the sons of disobedience. Satan had incarcerated us and enslaved us to the world, its pleasures, its desires, and its preferences. And because of sin's influence, humanity plunged to a condition into which no doctor or triage could handle. We were spiritually dead. For all of us, the devil made every effort to separate us from righteousness using cunning and manipulation and deception. He steered our focus and our morality toward the lowest depths. The prophet Isaiah and the apostle Paul elaborate on this where in Isaiah 64 verse 6, Isaiah says, all of us have become like one who is unclean. And all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We are all shriveled up like a leaf and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. Paul then commentated this way in Romans 3.23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Maybe this quote will make the picture a little clearer for you, child of God. If the biggest sinner you know isn't you, then you don't know yourself very well. In my church, that's a Twitterific moment. If you, if the biggest sinner you know isn't you, you don't know yourself very well. Child of God, sin does a real number on us. It stains the fabric of our moral garments and it severs us from oneness with God. It leaves us spiritually non-responsive. So we have been breathing, moving through life, but we have been spiritually dead. Physically walking, but possessing no spiritual health. This type of condition didn't need adrenaline. We didn't need defibrillators. We didn't need CPR because those are instruments of resuscitation. What we needed was to be made alive. And I know you've seen what you thought was resurrection in the lives of some of the characters Jesus dealt with. But Jairus' daughter, that wasn't resurrection. That was resuscitation. What happened with the widow of Nain's son? That was, re that was not resurrection. That was resuscitation. Even with Lazarus, that wasn't resurrection. That was resuscitation. The difference being in resuscitation, one would die again. But in resurrection, you live forevermore. We needed a different remedy. We, we needed a remedy that was more potent. We needed a remedy that was more efficacious. We didn't need resuscitation. We needed resurrection. And so Paul gives us the answer to what we need and who we get it from. In Ephesians chapter 2, Paul says, But Jesus intervened and reconciled our depravity, and through his love, he made up the difference with his all-sufficient grace. He did not resuscitate us, but the Bible says in his love, we were resurrected with him, no longer slaves to trespasses and sins, but surrendered to righteousness to a new life. I promise I'm in the Bible, Ephesians 2, 4, and 6. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I hope you catch the marvelous picture of grace here where God opens up his heart and gives to us what we don't deserve. I want you to catch this this afternoon because God raised us with him because he just doesn't want to save us from sin, but he wants us to embrace and enjoy the newness of life. Child of God, God is invested not only in who we are, but who he wants us to be. And this text is tailored to teach us how God's grace renovates us and raises our value as God's investment property. 
And for the next few moments, I would like to suggest three ways in which God's grace takes care of his investment. Please pay close attention and keep your Bible open because I don't want you to accuse me of pulpit malpractice. The first way that God takes care of his investment is that through God's grace, God works for us. I'm in the text. Consider Ephesians 2, 8 with me. For by grace, you are saved through faith. Don't go too fast. because I want you to catch what this text is saying. You and I are the objects of salvation. But salvation is not attained or achieved on our own. We had somebody handling salvation for us. We were saved by grace through faith. We had had a substitute who paid all of our debt and changed our standing. And we're living in an age where so many love to brag about their achievements and accomplishments as a means of trying to elevate their status. But I need you to understand that no matter how many accomplishments, no matter how many achievements, no matter how many accolades you have received, it is not enough. There's nothing that can accomplish for you what God's grace did for us in Jesus Christ. Jesus went to the cross. And in our place, he died so that we wouldn't have to. That's why Romans 5, 8 but says, But God commendeth his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That is God's grace at work for us. And this is just a word for those of us who for one reason or another seem to have a hard time wrapping our minds around the full weight of Christ's sacrifice. I'm speaking specifically to those who today have a problem with the unmerited favor of God called grace. I need somebody here to understand that there's no amount of vegetarianism, no amount of Sabbath church service, no amount of dress reform, no amount of doctrinal orthodoxy, no No amount of charts or timelines, no amount of Sabbath, lunch, prophetic, proficiency discussions, no amount of denominational do's or don'ts will ever validate us in the sight of God. Whoever we are and whatever we are is a direct result of God's grace to us and I'm not going to go any further I'm not going to preach one more second until I get some folks in the Paran sanctuary wherever you are to put your hands in the air put your hands together and thank God for his grace I hope you're not too cute to lean your head back, open up your mouth, and tell God thank you for his grace. It was grace that woke you up this morning. It was grace that started you on your way. It was grace that put food on your table. It was grace that put joy in your heart. It was grace that put peace in your soul. It was grace that supplies your heart with joy. It was grace that fills your mind with peace. It's grace that supplies your life with meaning. Somebody holler grace. I wish y'all felt that thing the way I feel it. So listen to what the ancient preacher Charles Spurgeon said. He said, so is it with the grace of God. He has as much grace as you want, and he has a great deal more than that. Oh, Oh, boy. (laughs) The Lord has as much grace as a whole universe will require. But he has vastly more. He overflows with grace. All the demands that can ever be made on the grace of God will never impoverish him or even diminish his store of mercy. There will remain an incalculably precious mine of mercy as full as when he first began to bless the sons of men. Basically what he's saying, no matter what amount of grace you need, he's got enough grace for all of you and so much more. Yeah, I, I, I know, I know. That, 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 that caught you off guard because for a lot of us, grace is a dirty word until we need it. 
Grace is a problem word until we need it applied to us. Here's the reality. All of us need grace. Look at the person next to you. Don't say nothing. Just look at the person next to you. The person next to you is the X something. Person next to you has been through something, has done something, has said something, has thought something, and yet and still, in the love of God, God pulled out of the cabinet of mercy enough grace to cover you in spite of who you are. And what I love about God and his grace is that he extends to me of his own choosing and not of my prompting. God chooses us and grants us a spot on his team. And I wish I could encourage a few people in, in this place today that no matter what your condition or position is in life, God in his grace chooses you. Amen. And this is a good time for us to, to, to just celebrate God and give him the praise for all of the people who did not choose you. The nominating committee didn't choose you, but that's okay. God chose you. The board didn't choose you, but that's okay. God chose you. They didn't even mention your name, but no worries. God chose you. The click may have frozen you out, but God pulled you in. He chose you. Church folk rejected you, but be encouraged. It is okay because God chose you. And while you're celebrating that God chose you, you ought to keep it going and celebrate that he chose you with no strings attached. No manipulation, no quid pro quo, no compromise, no shady dealings, no backroom deals. But God extended the depth of his benevolence and the width of his compassion to you and me. And in his grace, he gave us grace and mercy, his amazing gift. That's why the songwriter wrote, Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. Jesus being faithful to the mission of heaven. He died and offered us the gift of salvation wrapped in grace. And so I said that we see God's investment in us in what his grace has done for us. But not only does he work for us, but God, through his grace, takes care of his investment as he also works in us. I'm still in the text. I haven't gone anywhere. God's work for us is just the beginning. As his investment, the choice is only the start. There's more to be done. Paul says in verse 9, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And then in verse 10, for we are his workmanship. When Paul uses the word workmanship, he's speaking in terms of handiwork or creative masterpiece. When it comes to God, his grace is an investment. What God does with us through Jesus, through the work of the Holy Spirit, is grace in action. The gift of salvation isn't just to rescue us from sin's penalty. It is also to give us a chance to live out our eternal destiny, otherwise known as newness of life. Every day, let the church say every day. Every day, God's grace is working in us to make us into new creatures. Okay. Y'all making me work hard today. Every day, God's grace is working in us to make us into new creatures. <laughs> uh, one more time, because you didn't catch it. Watch the grace of God at work every day in spite of your foolishness. God is working in us to make us into new creatures. Okay, you still ain't get it. You still ain't get it. Even on what you consider to be your best day, which is actually a bad day, because all of our righteousness is as filthy rags, even when you think you're doing great, God is still working on you because there's more work to be done. Yeah, that's. We used to sing a song 
when I was a kid, he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be because he's still working on me. I want you to catch today because when we talk about the profession of our faith, what we believe, we have to come to the conclusion that every day that God is working in us is proof that sanctification is not a fairy tale. Uh. <laughs> So, so Paul is writing this, and he's able to talk about this type of stuff intimately, God working every day in him. His writing seems to have him taking a stroll down memory lane, meditating from his time in prison. As you are no doubt aware, Paul wrote some of his deepest theological reflections while behind bars. And in those moments, he remembers when God's grace collided with his conscience on the Damascus Road. He remembers when Christ changed his life and how the work in him continued even when he was afflicted with a thorn. He remembers that even as the chief of sinners and as a schizophrenic preacher desiring to do good, yet finding the way to perform, he was the recipient of God's grace to the point where he was chosen to be an apostle. And Paul's life confirms that God's work in him and in us is nothing short of of a masterpiece. I want to help somebody today. I don't mean any harm, but I'm flying out tonight, so don't really have to see you again. Um, if you look in the mirror and you take your own stroll down memory lane to see who you are now, Compared to who you were, you should run around the sanctuary thanking God that he never gave up working in you. I know, I know, I know. Some of y'all are looking at me like, Pastor, I never did anything. Yeah, you never got caught. And I know, I know, that's not, that's not our problem. We've grown out of it. No, 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 you... You, 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 your, your issue is not that you don't do it, it's that you can't do it anymore. We need to understand today that this text calls us to remember that God has purchased us at a great price and has invested his grace in us that we might become who he has always intended for us to be. For those who may be unaware of what that is, an investment property, let the church say investment property. An investment property is a piece of property that an investor purchases with the intent of fixing it up to sell or rent. When the investor looks at the property, he or she assesses what needs to be done and puts a plan of action together. They pay attention to the outside, the shell, the yard, the roof, the foundation, the driveway, the siding. But what really sets the building up for greater value is the attention given on the inside. Come close, come close. Experts say once the landscape is appropriate, then focus on the kitchen and the bathroom. You want to upgrade the furniture and change the faucets and the window treatments because minor improvements to the interior can increase the value of the property significantly. If an investor spends time and energy and money on the interior of an investment property and the value increases exponentially, then imagine what happens when our heavenly investor undertakes the renovation of his investment property, namely you and me. He dispatches the Holy Spirit to work through prayer and the word of God to upgrade the artwork of our consciousness. God's grace is even at work in us through suffering. God is steadily at work in the investment property, creating a phenomenal masterpiece our rusted hearts filled with guilt malice and shame are renovated and replaced with the peace of God on the inside we have had our character modified and our thinking redirected our hearts are renewed and the trajectory of our lives reimagined our words are filtered as our thoughts are brought under subjection cynicism is replaced with optimism so that the glass is no longer half empty so that now it's half full the sky is not partly clouded 
cloudy. It's partly sunny because just like investment property down here, in heaven's perspective, your value rises when attention is given to your character. When we let God work in us, we understand that we are a masterpiece in progress and that the work of the Holy Spirit is a daily work. The work of the Holy Spirit is to cause, to will, and to do his good pleasure. Now, might I offer some assistance to somebody who spends a lot of time fixing the external? I want to talk to somebody who's overly concerned with how you appear to other people. I want to give you just some counsel in passing. Not going to stay here long. Um, You ready for this? Stop. Stop putting your energy into trying to impress people that really don't care. Stop. Stop. Spending your time trying to impress people that don't even talk to you on a regular basis. What? For what? Don't, 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 don't go to events with clothes. You got, still got the, 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 the sticker on the ticket on in the back. Don't, don't, don't do that stuff to impress people. I mean, renting luxury cars like that's what you drive on a regular basis to impress folks. Stop. That stuff won't get you into heaven. It will not change your character. As a matter of fact, it will expose your character. Pay attention to the inside. Pay attention to the internal. Pay attention to the small details of your character and your consciousness. Give the Holy Spirit access to your heart and to your life. And when the Holy Spirit gets done with you, you look better than an extreme makeover. You look better than the people on Instagram. You look better than a better homes and gardens. You look better than the stuff on HGTV. You will do better than all the other reality shows. And even if it takes your entire life and great effort, what's to come? is what's better than what's been. You will look better than people's perception of you. Stop focusing on the external. Here's what the Bible says. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are become as new. I know I'm in the Bible because he that begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I know I'm in the Bible. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Ladies and gentlemen, that's God's grace working in us. And so, God's grace for his investment is firstly at work for us. Secondly, God's grace is at work in us. But finally, because we are God's investment, God's grace is also at work through us. I'm still in the text, haven't gone anywhere. It's not only about what God has done for you. It's not only what God has done in you, but it's also what God wants to do through you. Text declares we are created in Christ for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them now it's very important that we realize the declared and undeclared truths of the text scripture makes it clear that we are saved for good works and that it does not say we are saved by good works Here we go. What time do I normally get out of church? Take my time? He didn't mean that. Um, <laughs> listen to what the text says. We were saved for good works. We are not saved by good works. The grace is a gift from God, lest any man should boast. Ah. Uh, God intends that his grace to us reflects the character of the heavenly contractor who has put in the work. 
we are to become walking advertisements, roaming billboards for our divine benefactor. The word calls that living epistle read of all men. Acts says that we are to be witnesses and so we testify by our life that what God's grace through the Holy Spirit does in us is that it allows the character of Christ to shine through us. The grace-filled believer who has experienced the handiwork, workmanship of Christ, is eager to demonstrate God's power in the living of a changed life. In other words, when God's work has been done for us and in us, God's grace and mercy flows through us to others. And I declare today that our relationship with God is clearly demonstrated in our interaction with others. That's why Jesus said in John 13, 35, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you have love one for another. Listen to me, church. The truest manifestation of God's transforming power in our lives is the way we produce his love in ministering to others. Mm-hmm. Not about you, but what God has done in you that now becomes evidence of what can happen when you open your heart to the Holy Spirit's prompting and resulting in something on the inside working on the outside. So here, here it is. I want you to catch this. As you are professing your faith, you will say more through your life's example than through your eloquent speech. I uh, was sitting in a restaurant and uh, minding my business, eating. I have my family with me, sitting, minding my business, just, you know, just eating. Getting ready to leave, pay the bill. I feel the gentleman behind me, and I could tell it was a gentleman because his hand was very rough on my shoulder. His hand was very rough on my shoulder. I could tell it was a gentleman. His hand was very rough on my shoulder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you caught that? Okay. Um, <laughs> And so he, he be, I start to turn around. He begins, he says, oh, let me. He begins to put my coat over me. I don't know him. I've never seen him before in my life. He puts my coat on me, and he says, oh, no, I had to come put the coat over the man of God. He said, I was watching your, you and your family, and they were so well-behaved and so, and, and they looked so connected to God that I thought it must have been a preacher's family. At the table. He says, what church are you affiliated with? The conversation sprung into a whole discussion about where I go to church and what I do. You can say more from your life example than we'll ever say from behind this sacred desk. We are, we are God's handiwork prepared beforehand so that we can reflect the goodness of God to others that they will want to experience the same joy that we have in our lives. Let me see if I can make this clear, who, you, who you're called to become. You're called to become God's agents. You're, you're called to be ambassadors of the kingdom of God. You are called to be representatives of righteousness on the earth. You are called to impact. You're, you're, in call, you're called to, to, to feed the hungry. You're called to be a voice for the voiceless. You're called to courageously speak up and speak out against racism, misogyny, and privilege. We are called. To be God's agents. We're called to defend the truth and speak truth to power. We're called to call wrong by its name. We're called to side with the marginalized and the oppressed. Just like Jesus. We are called to defend those who have nobody to defend them. 
We're called. <laughs> oh, thank you, God. We're called. Everybody say we're called. We're called to surrender our privilege for the benefit of the underprivileged. God didn't extend his grace to us to sit. God extended his grace to us to scatter, to be agents of his grace working through us. Go ahead and play. I, I, don't, I don't really feel like preaching any harder, to be honest with you. I, I, am, I am prayerful. I am prayerful that we really grab where God wants us to move and to navigate on this earth as we await the second coming of Jesus Christ. And it is soon. Consider that God invests such an amazing gift in unworthy containers that God would pour into you and I his treasure of grace. God loved us so much and loves us so much that he keeps on working in us and on us and grace hear me today grace is not a get out of jail free card grace is God's method of holding it together until you get it together God has a plan for each and every one of you before you were formed in your mother's womb. And that plan will not go under because of your mistakes. As a matter of fact, the omniscient omnipotent, all-seeing, all-knowing God thought about all your sins before you were born. And he still placed his grace in you so that you would turn around and take the experience of the transforming power of God in your life and share it with somebody else that they might see how God can do amazing things. That's why it's important for us as a body of Christ. I'm getting a little bit of trouble here, but that's okay. That's why it's important as a body of Christ that we are not just experts in proclaiming biblical truth but we are experts in living it. Which means wherever you live, you show up at city town hall meetings because there's something you have that they don't. You know what God's word says about justice. You know what God's word says about fairness. You know what God's word says about treating people fairly and right. You know that we're called to show mercy, walk humbly before our God. You know. That means, that means you show up at City Hall when they try to red line and rezone school districts that affect people with low income 
And instead of giving them a chance to grow in education, it sets them up for prison pipeline. You show up. You show up at the prison not just to say you have a prison ministry. You show up because the difference between you and the person inside is that grace kept you out. We are living in some times where if the church does not run to the forefront of the lines of justice and righteousness, we're going to have to apologize for a whole lot of things. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm independent from your pastor. This is not him. This is me. I'm, this is what the Lord laid on my heart. Our churches can no longer be country clubs where your membership dictates your ability to say things and hold position and, and, and you feel like because you're, you, you give some amount of money, you're entitled to some favors and some privileges that, that ain't how the kingdom of God works. First of all, you don't give tithe and offering to get your way. You give because God made a way. That's the first thing. But we're not, we're not, we're not heads of country clubs. That's not what pastors are. That's not what, you are not country club members. And to be honest with you, we won't have no golf courses for y'all to use. But there is a city that's dying spiritually and literally. I drove down yesterday. I don't even know what that little housing project place was. But when I looked at it over to my right, I thought to myself, and this does not concern anybody? I grew up in New York. I've seen the hood. I've pastored in low-income, impoverished neighborhoods. We were saved for good works. Your affiliation with Parine, whatever church you're a part of, it's not to say you're a part of Parine Church or First Church. It's, it's because you're a disciple that knows what grace looks like. Every time you look in the mirror, you see grace. I'm going I'm to tell you my little story real quick. and I, I Real quick. Man, if y'all knew me about 20, 20 something years ago. You like how I fixed that real quick? I will be disqualified from being your pastor. Man, I did some stuff and I wrestled with some stuff still. I mean, listen, preachers ain't perfect. Let's get that out, let's get that out the way right now. We are not perfect. We, you know, you heard Pastor Benoit last night. He's got to go see the oil change man and he's praying that the Lord will give him the right words to say to the oil change man. We ain't perfect. We, stuff gets under our skin but man I came to I came to a a very bad place in my life and I didn't allow God to work it out in me before I started pastoring and it showed up in the early years of my ministry To the extent, Pastor Benoit, I never told you, I had written my resignation letter and was going to walk away. And one day in the car, the Holy Spirit just arrested my attention and reminded me of a passage of scripture that the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. Even though I made a mistake, 
It did not mess up God's plan for my life. Went home, I deleted the save draft of the email and my resignation letter. Because you don't want, to get, you want that to get out. I mean, you got to feed the family. I deleted the draft. And every day, my prayer has been, God, don't let me have stood behind this desk. Don't let me have done all this stuff and be a castaway. Let somebody, through a life's example, know Jesus. This weekend, your pastor has summoned this time together for two reasons. One, so that we know why we believe what we believe. But then two, so that we can take that and impact a community. So that whether it's 150 of you in here or 300 with online or whatever it is, as I said last night, if one person sought to disciple one person, then the church would double in its size every single year. And if those people turned around and discipled somebody, then the church would again multiply. And if those people who were discipled by the people you discipled would get somebody and listen, it's not about building a bigger facility. Let's erase that. It's about making kingdom impact. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, and this gospel shall be preached as a witness throughout the world. There are people right down the street who've never heard about Jesus Christ and his love. And they need to hear it from you. We are saved by grace through faith. Not of ourselves, but because of him. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. God, this time really didn't go the way I saw it going, but that's what's so great about you God is that you when we ask you to lead you do just that God I pray for revival and reformation in this church I pray for an overflow of passion for winning lost souls to Christ God in the short time we have left on this earth let it be the conclusion from your lips to our ears that because of faithfulness to what you've asked us to do we are able to hear well done thou good and faithful servant help us to be clear and authentic reflections of the grace of God agents of the kingdom of heaven who live and work and go to school and socialize in spaces where God you allow us to have influence and impact like Daniel and Esther and Joseph you allow us to have the type of presence like Peter and John God we pray that you would even use us God to be the agents of your miracle working power to those who need a miracle. I pray, Lord, that in this church will be risen up people who are not just Seventh Day Adventists, but who are Seven Days Adventists. I pray, God, for this pastor and for his vision, for his heart for you. I pray, God, that you'll continue to steady and guide him, lead him, give him clarity. And as he hears from you, give him the words and the 
initiatives to share with the congregation. God, pour your spirit out on the congregation. May they themselves reimagine and reshape and rebuild. And may the result or may the testimony not be look what we have done. But look what God has done as we followed him. I pray, God, once again, that we would live our lives from the knees up, calling on you for everything we need, trusting and relying on you. Thank you for saving us in spite of ourselves. Thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit daily, working in and through us, transforming us. Thank you, God. That we don't have to be spiritually dead. We have been resurrected and seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. Thank you, God. Lord, if it be that I, we never see each other again, if it be that nobody remembers my name, let it be that today somebody had a transformative experience with Christ Jesus and given their lives to the Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, before we go, we don't want to miss the opportunity to extend the invitation for somebody to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Jesus died for your sins. Jesus died so that you could have the chance for eternal life. All you need to do is to extend your heart towards the Savior and tell Jesus, I want to walk with you from here and now on. Listen, at my church, we do this in, by just simply admitting three things. A, admit that you're a sinner in need of a Savior. B, believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins. And C, commit to living for him from here on out. If you're here today, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and today you want to give Christ your life. You want to be in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ for the very first time. I want to invite you to lift your hand where you are. Lift your hand where you are. The pastors and the elders are seeing you. You want to be in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ for the very first time. You're giving Christ your life today. You found out today that grace is available to you. Where are you? Where are you? In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hymn number 523 to close. 523, my faith has found a resting place, not in a man made. My faith has found a resting place, not in a man made creed. I trust the ever living one that he for me will plead. I need no other evidence, I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. Enough for me. Enough for me that Jesus is and my fear and doubt. For soul I come to him. For soul I come to him. He will not cast me out. I need no other I need no other It is enough that Jesus died My soul is resting on the word of God, living word of God. Salvation in my Savior's name. My Savior's salvation, salvation through his blood. I need no other evidence. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died. The great physician heals the 
by today's word let me hear you say amen. amen if you felt the presence of God in this place let me hear you say amen, amen. amen. Pastor Bree said we just want to thank God for you and for mm. your ministry uh, we are going to keep, keep you in our prayers so that God will continue to this great work that he has begun uh, in your life uh, beloved uh, immediately after the service you are all invited uh, to join us in the fellowship hall upstairs second level uh, where we can share a meal together uh, my baptismal uh, those who got baptized, we're having our service at 245. 245, meet us right down here in the sanctuary. Uh, I will not keep you long of that, I promise. Let us pray. Father, once again, we want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you for what you taught us today. Uh, Father, you are God of grace. Uh, what we so desperately need is that grace. But you're also a transformative God because you are in the renovation business. Uh, and you want to make sure that you renovate us from the inside out. And for that, we just want to give you praise. I pray a special thanks and prayer for Pastor Brissette. I pray that you will continue to bless him in his person and in his ministry. As a husband, as a father, as a friend, as a brother, I pray that you will continue to use him in a mighty way. May he be the Abraham of his community, that others will be blessed through him. And as we prepare to leave this place, we pray that we will never separate from your presence. Do what only you can do. Send us out as disciples for you so that with us and through us, this work can be done and your second coming can, can, can come. We thank you for what you've already done, what you're doing, what you will continue to do. For this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Let the people of God say, Amen. Let the church say, Amen.